Hi, I'm David Casivio, and I'm here to talk to you about the Panama Papers incident, which took place at the Panamian law corporate firm, Mosa Fonseca. Now, the founder of Mosa Fonseca is Jürgen Mosa, and he was deemed the head of the company during court trials, where he was placed on trial in Nevada for incorporation fraud. He committed perjury on the stand and was found to be guilty. He was released. The Mosa Fonseca is the fourth largest financial offshore services provider in the world, and it's located in Panama City, around right there. A undercover journalist from Germany who was working at the firm released the files to the ICIJ the International Consortium of Investigative Journalism, who broke the story to the world. And what did he release? Well, he released 11.5 million financial documents, photos, papers, everything. And to show the sheer magnitude of this, this is about 10 million grains of sand, and this is about 2 million. When Edward Snowden released 1.77 million files from the NSA, it shook the world. But it's nothing in the sheer magnitude of what happened in 2016. As a matter of fact, the files are still being sifted through and new court cases are popping up even today in 2020. This is a map demonstrating the global impact on corporations and LLCs throughout the globe. As you can see, most of the impact takes place in Eurasia. A little bit in South America, specifically Argentina, and nothing in the United States. But in fact, there were about 1,200 corporations found in the list from Nevada. This is because Nevada has very simple and non-strict rules on incorporation. And the companies in the Barbados and the British Virgin Island make up for a majority of the lost taxes. As you can see, that's a lot of damage. This map actually displays the $1.2 billion of repatriated taxes that have been found since 2016, as individually reported by the countries. The light green just demonstrates investigations that were sparked and court cases, and that's why they pop up a lot more significantly. But the 22 countries in dark green represent the $1.2 billion repatriated, which is now in 2020 up to about $1.4 to $1.6 billion. It's also believed that the countries did not properly report all of the lost taxes out of embarrassment or whatever it may be. So the number is likely a lot higher. But the number reported as being lost when the financial documents first dropped from tax evasion is around 2.6 billion. And it'll take a few more years to get back up to that number. And here's a graph demonstrating the top contributors to this 1.2 billion of repatriated taxes. These are the top 11 out of 22. And as you can see, as a matter of fact, the top five here from the U UK to Australia actually make up about $800 million worth of repatriated taxes. And the big five there are over two thirds of the amount recuperated. As you can see, the UK itself is responsible for over $250 million. And we also have here at a different scale the bottom contributors. Uh, a lot of countries on here are surprising. Uh, for example, Luxembourg and Sweden were expected to be up in the top for their wealth and relaxed banking laws. But as a matter of fact, most of the cases found in the repatriated taxes was minimal. A majority of the tax evasion used and discovered through the Panama Papers was actually legal and could not be condemned in court. However, since the leaking of the papers, it is now highly condemned in social court and very looked down upon by citizens. This sparks from the anger of you're stealing money. In the past, it was viewed as a your good job getting out of money from the government. But now it's viewed as a you're taking money away from my public funding. Here's actually the gross impact of all of the top 22 contributors. As you can see, the big five here really does contribute to over two thirds of the amount. And just this net down here of most of the 
bottom 11 is only about one eighth. Now, what was the impact? In the immediate repercussions to the Panama Papers being released, several heads of governments had changed. An example, the Argentina Prime Minister, the Prime Minister of Australia, the Prime Minister of Great Britain, and the Prime Minister of Iceland all resigned or stepped down one way or the other due to their names popping up on the list, which is longer than the Jeffrey Epstein flight log. As a matter of fact, it includes over 400 individuals that are well known and over 300 companies. This is only a small mere amount of the companies that Mossack Fonseca represented as they at one point were in charge of over 300,000 corporations across the globe. And as the years have gone by, more and more papers have been sifted through and more names have been added to that list. So the number is still growing the higher than 400. Uh, immediate benefits from the repatriated taxes were higher funding for city projects. Immediate downfalls were that due to the countries in South America basing taxes on the wealth of your area as opposed to your personal wealth, in Argentina, a lot of citizens are now forced to pay much higher tax rates because their neighbors have been found to have a lot more money. Some known individuals that popped up on here that range from athletes to heads of governments to just celebrities include Bobby Fischer, who claimed to have never paid taxes since 1976. Jackie Chan, who never made a comment on why his name was on the list. And Lionel Messi, who ended up being found guilty and had to pay 1.4 million euros of tax evasion. And whoever this guy is. But they actually found that most of the celebrities on there were, in fact, proceeding in legal actions. Legal tax evasions through loopholes and wormholes and anywhere else you could get it. But since then, a number of laws have been instituted to close up some of these loopholes and bring more of those taxes back to the community. Uh, the other ethical impact here is whistleblowers. So the German investigative journalist who leaked these papers is currently in hiding and he produced an 1800 word statement claiming that whistleblowers deserve immunity. And there's a bit of a issue where a lot of people have to look at their moral compass. Do they deserve immunity from all of their crimes or just from the retribution of what they blew the whistle for? An example, a lot of people use these snitching techniques to get out of other crimes that they've been con convicted of. The real question is, should society turn a blind eye to illegal activities over one good deed? Now, tax evasion. This was another moral compass issue. Prior to the Panama Papers incident being leaked, it was highly celebrated if you were able to avoid taxes. It was a good on you, a way to get back at the government for stealing your money. However, following the leak of the papers, the society's view has completely changed to now the wealthy individuals are robbing the rest of the world from their city funding, from their funding for schools, from anything. This changed a lot of views as a lot of reporters have come back to the ICIJ and said that now individuals are scared to try and achieve tax evasion. They're scared that one day the information will leak and the wrath that is wrought upon them will be far worse than just paying the money now. You'll end up paying double the taxes you owe, and more on top, and you could serve a prison and jail sentence. Now, a lot of Americans uh, love to complain about wealthy individuals getting out of taxes, or that they're not paying enough, or that they're not donating enough, especially during these coronavirus times. But as a statistical fact, in any given year, 44 to 47% of Americans are receiving federal income help and not paying a single dime of taxes, of federal taxes. It does not include state taxes. Now, a majority of these individuals are above the working age, collecting Social Security, 
the elderly, or they're below the working age, as in below 18 or below 22. But there is still a good 25% of those individuals who are in the range of 25 to 55, who based on their jobs or what's going on in their life, don't pay taxes. And it's just odd to see individuals complain about not having to pay taxes to the wealthy, but they want handouts. Now, in the end, will the world ever be the same? No. This was the largest data dump in history, recent or further back. It was about 1.6 terabytes of information. It's still a monstrous hill to climb, and as a matter of fact, the ICIJ released all of the, a majority of the papers to other news firms to sort through so they can release titles because it's simply too much to go through. Since this event, it has sparked over 200 different investigations. They still pop up today, and a lot of the individuals who were involved with the Panama Papers incident decided to come forward and confess to their tax evasion out of fear of being discovered in the future. And a lot of individuals that were not involved in the Panama Papers incident also confessed to their tax evasion and realized that it was better to just get it out of the way now. To recompass everything in this presentation, is tax evasion, whether it be legal or illegal, a moral good deed or a moral bad deed? Do whistleblowers deserve immunity from all of their crimes for protection? And do the wealthy deserve to be taxed higher for the money that they are hiding? As good old Uncle Sam says, I want you to pay your taxes.